Today we're going to be doing something admittedly kind of random. I've got several guns out. We're going to shoot like one or two groups with each of these guns. It's not going to be like an entire batch of load development. I've just got like a bunch of very, very partially finished projects and we're just going to do a little bit of testing with each of them. So with that out of the way, we're on a private range, private property. There's no bystanders. I'm the only one here. It is safe. This is a semi-automatic gun and a 10 round magazine for YouTube's sake. So that out of the way, this gun is a AR-10 chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. It is not a factory rifle. I put it together myself. It's got a Grey Ghost receiver set, Aero Precision bolt carrier group, Aero handguard, and a Odin Works 6.5 Creedmoor barrel, I believe in the DMR profile with a 22 inch tube. Shooting some hand loads, we're gonna shoot two different 10 round groups here, which should make a couple people happy for some reason. Um, we're gonna be using Peterson Small Rifle Primer Brass with Remington 7.5 small rifle primers, uh, 130 grain Berger hybrid bullets, Vitivori N555, the two that we're going to be shooting is 43.5 and a half grains and 44.0 grains, I think I said that right. Um, 10 round groups, the first one's going to be 43 and a half, second's going to be 44.0, we're going to get some speeds, I'm probably not going to name off each speed, I might, but uh, we will go over the average and whatnot. But we're shooting at uh, 85 to 90 yards roughly not quite a hundred. I just can't quite get back to hundred where I'm at right now But we'll make that happen eventually, but we're gonna go ahead and get started shoot ten rounds I'm not sure where we're gonna aim at on the target yet. I haven't quite decided yet, but we'll figure it out here in a moment Unfortunately, I've already got a lot of Mirage. So this is gonna be kind of hard, but we're gonna work with what we got so 10 rounds 6.5 Creed coming up on the top left Diamond unless we completely miss the target in which case we'll bring it down Oh, we, point of impact was good. The speed on that was 2778, 2793, 2704, 2808, 2799 2795 and 2783 so that group was pretty crappy um, golly these things get so hot um, the group wasn't that great but the last time that I shot um, unfortunately the best part of this test I was shooting with a friend and I wasn't filming the first three loads that we had shot were actually very accurate. They were done at 300 yards, but that was 42 grains up to 43 grains in half grain increments. And we had about, a, it was like a 2.98 inch group at 300 yards. I think nine out of 10 shots. One, I did throw one of the shots, so um, it wasn't a 10 shot group per se, but nine shots went into like two 2.8 inches or something like that. It was, it was a very good group out of a gun like this for uh, 300 yards with very minimal load development. So Anyway, this was definitely not impressive at all. We are getting on to the higher end of the powder spectrum. So um, we're reaching pretty High velocities at this point, but um, we're gonna check to see how beat up the brass is here in a second and then move on to the next one But uh, I'm gonna go over the speed real quick Okay, so speed was an average of 2790 an extreme spread of 30 and a standard deviation of 9.2 so the velocity statistics are not bad um, that was actually pretty good for I think this gun that's 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 excellent um, to me for gas guns I, I usually expect less out of them and this doesn't seem like it's doing too bad but again the, the accuracy sucked on this but the velocity definitely tells a, a story of consistency so anyway uh, enough yapping we're gonna move on and shoot the last one as long as this brass isn't too beat up but if it is we're just gonna get a different gun out because this thing's gonna need time to cool off anyway so moving along okay next we have the Bergara HMR in 308 I think it's the Bergara wilderness model if I'm not mistaken this one's got a, a gigantic scope on it but um, that's not important the point is we're doing a 308 Winchester the loads that we're using is a Peterson Large Rifle Primer Brass with CCI 200 primers, Vitivori N540 powder, 43 grains of that, and the 174 grain Hornady ELD VT bullet. We have five of these loaded. We are going to go for the top 
corner or the top point of the center diamond on the target and we're just going to try to see how this thing groups with five of these. We did a test on this already. This was literally the only powder that these bullets grouped even halfway decent with and by halfway decent I mean the rest of them were like two to two and a half inch groups so pretty horrible. Um, this one shot under an inch so we're just going to see if it happens again or if it was a fluke because it was kind of weird to see it the first time. I apologize for the wind. It was really calm when I came out here and now it's like super windy. So anyway, we're going to put five on the top right corner, see what happens. Or the top center corner of the diamond. Twenty six fifty two. Twenty six fifty six. Twenty six forty nine. Got really consistent velocity so far. Twenty six forty five. I have no idea what just happened with that shot. Like everything else was falling right in there. So that just kind of went off into left field. 26.49 right, so, uh, was that last velocity. We had really, really consistent velocity. I think that that load actually does have some potential. I just need to play with it a little bit more, but that was just really strange. Um, you could tell they were wanting a group, but that four shot just threw me for a loop. So. The velocities on that were very consistent. So we're looking at an average of 2650, an extreme spread of 11, and a standard deviation of 3.7, less than 4. So that was very, very consistent velocity. I, again, don't know what happened with that last shot, or the fourth shot, but um, that's, this brass was fired in another gun, so that's probably part of the reason that there's um, inconsistency on that side of things. But I can't prove that. I'm just guessing that that might have something to do with it. But uh, we might go ahead and get a fresh batch of brass and use that in this gun because this doesn't seem to be doing us any favors. At least we could eliminate the variable. A variable. But that was the Vitivorian 540, 43 grains of Vitivorian 540 with the 174 grain ELD VT. And uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to probably another 308. So let's do that next. Okay, next we have a SIG Cross in 308 Winchester. We have a uh, Trigicon Credo 2.5 to 15 power scope on here. We're going to be shooting some Barnes bullets this time. We've got some Alpha 308 large rifle primer brass, and we've got 48 grains of Varget in here with a 130 grain Barnes TTSX bullet, and we're going to be shooting a five shot group. Hopefully at the top right diamond, as long as we don't miss this first shot, I'm going to use this as a cider just to make sure that we're on paper because I'm not sure how good this thing is sided in actually, especially with this load. But uh, we're going to go for that top right diamond. Okay, <clears throat> so I changed my mind. We're going to go for the left side of the center diamond. 28.19 or 29 or 28.20. 28.12. Twenty-eight, twelve. I feel like that one opened it up quite a bit. I can't see really well, but it looks like it was in the red. Yeah, that sucks. Twenty-eight, thirty-four. Twenty-eight, sixteen. So, started off looking pretty good, but I don't know if maybe it had something to do with barrel heat, but that opened up pretty bad. <clears throat> that grouped a lot better the first time we had tested it with less powder, so might just have to back off on the powder a little bit. Pretty good velocity spread though, so we had an average of 28, 19, an extreme spread of 22, and a standard deviation of 8, so that's still not bad. Uh, those Barnes bullets aren't the most consistent things I've seen on the planet for being stamped all copper, but they they shoot pretty good sometimes. I've had pretty good luck with them in the past, but... That wasn't one of my better groups with this, so we will move on. The last thing we have is a SIG Cross and 6.5 Creedmoor, and I debate whether or not I want to even show any videos on it, but it will probably be the most accurate gun here, hopefully, so we shall see. All right, last up is our trusty SIG Cross in 6.5 Creedmoor. The load on this guy is kind of weird. It's an Alpha. These cases have been once fired and uh, full length resized. 
but it's alpha brass with large rifle primer pockets. We're using federal gold medal match large rifle primers, 36.5 grains of Varget, and a Burger 140 grain Elite Hunter bullet. Um, I have these kind of sorted in various ways. So this ammo is all loaded the same, but there's just some different like bullet links and stuff. So I'm being a little finicky. This gun was freshly cleaned, so all we're going to be doing is zero in the gun. We're not necessarily going to be trying to shoot groups or do load development. Um, I know this this load already shoots good enough for me to kill deer with it at the distances that I intend to hunt, but uh, we're just going to do a little playing with it, get it zeroed, and uh, get it ready for uh, hunting season. So it's low right. I'm not going to make any adjustments because, like I said, the barrel's clean, so I expect some weird variances to happen as a result of that. So we're right back to zero already. Uh, first shot went way low right. The next one was touching the bottom of the bullseye. We'll put a couple more in there, just see what happens. Right next to it. So I didn't see where that third shot went. I'm assuming it went into the, the same group because I, I can't tell. I've got too much Mirage coming off the can. We're probably gonna go ahead and shoot one more group with this thing just for shiggles, but uh, I already know this gun and this load shoot well together. It did not take long for that thing to come right back to zero, so that's nice to see. But uh, I would like to shoot just a few more through it and then I'm gonna take it to the range this weekend and do some long range shooting. I'll try to do some filming while I'm up there. I don't know how that's gonna go, but uh, depending on the weather conditions and whatnot, I'll try to get some video of this thing shooting out to distance. Please let me know if you'd like to see that. I always appreciate the suggestions in the comments. You guys let me know what you want to see so that I can plan better going forward. But as it stands for right now, that is it for today's video. So thank you for watching. I'm sorry this was like all over the place um, if I even post this, but uh, I appreciate you guys being here. Y'all stay risen, take care, be safe, and we'll see you on the next video.